All right, there's 12 and a half thousand. Let's level it for now. We haven't got too much high to climb anyway. And what I'm going to do is start a timer. I don't technically need to start it until I'm above 12 and a half, between 12 and a half. 3041, we'll do that, Sergeant Tom. All right, so it turns out we're about 12 and a half. Uh, before I lose the traffic on radar, traffic 11 o'clock and 15 miles northwest on altitude indicates 1-1000. One, if they're going through those mountains, they'll probably lose uh, both of the actually. Okay, thanks. You said he was uh, five zero miles and northwest bound? Zero to zero to zero to zero. They're currently at your 11 o'clock and one five, 15 miles northwest bound. Looks like they might be climbing at a 1-1000 one, one, and 300 now. Okay, thanks. Since they're tell, we will keep an eye out. And I'm getting a little burble, so between 12 and a half and 14, you can do it for 30 minutes. We've been at it for 60 seconds here. So, I am feeling a little burble. Now I'm going to, uh, I'm not really concerned about iPad performance. You know, I'm just going to let go of the stick and let it climb. It's trimmed for that climb anyway. Uh, our clearance right now is 1,500 feet. So yeah, the math is good. Let's go to 13. Give us an honest 2,000 feet above the highest point. What an absolutely incredible view. That's 13. We can go to 14. I wish I had taken my pulse oximeter out. It's behind the food back there. This will be a nice dry run for the return trip via Denver. Okay, so we're looking at an honest 2,100 feet of clearance above the highest point. And uh, it's really interesting, the burbles, which were not a massive concern, have completely disappeared at 13. Now what I need to be cautious about is I'm at 13,000 feet with oxygen on a hot day. So I need to be doing some checks and balances about what my mental faculties are. My mood is irrelevant. Being happy and joyful is, uh, is not relevant. I gotta just double check my decision making process. And just some basic math, you know, working with threes. But I do know my physiology pretty well. I do know that after, I've done this once for 22 minutes. At, uh, I believe I went to 13.5. And uh, I was getting fuzzy well before that. Tingly and a headache and by 22 up. All right, well, welcome to Taos. Holy cow, what a flight. I'm not even sure where to start. Um, normally I try and go from beginning to end, but I think we need to go from the end to the beginning because uh, I was just blown away by how amazingly scenic these mountains are. Uh, once I got over the, oh my goodness, are we going to die from a rotor that slams us into the ground or rips my plane apart? Once it became clear that wasn't going to be happening, um, I got to really enjoy the view. So, cannot overstate what that looks like in real real life. Um, so it's so nice I wanted to do the debrief outside instead of in the uh, in the FBO, but I'll brief the next leg in the FBO. Uh, but anyway, let's talk about uh, what went well on the flight, what didn't go so well. Um, still kind of a hunt on a high, it's been over an hour and I'm still just loving what happened during the arrival. Uh, so the view was amazing, uh, paid a lot of attention to when to start the climb, paying a lot of attention to what the weather felt like. It never really got rough, but I definitely felt a change in the conditions as I got higher. The higher I got, the better it got. So I'm, I'm happy that I was aware of that. Uh, we talked about the energy state of the airplane. The fact that it has excess energy at 13,000 feet is fantastic. It means you can, if you really need to climb quickly, I could still bang out a 3,000 foot per minute climb at least for 700 feet or maybe even 1,000 feet. Uh, so having that excess energy is great. Uh, more altitude is better. I'm glad that I did go to 13.5. Getting that pirate from that guy was fantastic. I'm glad that I opened up with that controller, uh, telling about what was going on, and another pilot chimed in with a pirate, which was great because he just went through the same path. So having that knowledge was great that, okay, at least at 13.5, which was higher than I was initially planning on going, conditions were good. So um, it was interesting that going to 13.5, even though it was kind of a high density altitude day, uh, going to 13.5 really felt okay. We're only up there for about six or seven minutes above 12.5. Uh, 
and uh, just a little bit of light tingling in the back of my head and that was it but the math the math part of my brain was still working decision making was good had a little bit of trouble finding the airport but I had just no clue what it really looked like in hindsight looking at satellite imagery would have been a good idea because everything's pretty nondescript around me uh, there's one road that goes by here and another road that crosses that one and I wasn't able to find them with all the snow so that could have been done a little bit better uh, so rewinding rest of the flight pretty unremarkable uh, really enjoyed it first leg I've really got to enjoy the visibility was great lighting was nice so en route not a whole lot to talk about the takeoff out of Stillwater was interesting because I got to try the reduced power takeoff um, so I'm, I'm really happy I did that it's given me the confidence that I'll be just fine getting out of Taos hasn't hurt that two planes have taken off ahead of me so the 310 just went off um, and the 182 which is probably closer in takeoff performance uh, was off by about what we were calling the abort point he's actually taking off by then and that is pretty much mirroring what I saw from the reduced the reduced power takeoff that we did in uh, in Stillwater so glad I did that nice confidence builder um, now had we not done that it wouldn't mean that I would die if the plane wasn't going to be able to take off here because the process still has a a takeoff point that's going to allow me to stop the problem is without any performance charts it's just a random guess as to whether I'm going to be good to go at the takeoff point or not okay so that was how that flight went I really don't have a whole lot more um, loved it recommend it if anyone has been avoiding mountain flying like I have for the longest time uh, do your research talk to some locals come up with a plan and then dip your toe in the water uh, it's not to say that every day is going to be as nice as this obviously I got very lucky the winds aloft are relatively light but um, the rewards are there if you if you do it this is the most incredible scenery I've ever seen by a considerable margin feeling very lucky to be doing the flight really enjoying it and looking forward to the next leg